Hi there, I'm excited for this video because we're going to look at an outstanding request from the community for Project Photo Web, which has finally landed in the application. We can now do advanced dependencies in our schedules. So that is something to look forward to and we're going to take a look at that uh, in just a minute. We're also going to take a look at other enhancements in Project Photo Web because I haven't done a January and December monthly update yet. So stay tuned and here we go. So here we are on my machine looking at a simple schedule template from Project Photo Web. Now this is my own tenant, uh, the Project Corner tenant, and what I'm seeing here is that the dependencies, dependent after, dependent on, don't yet have that new functionality. If I want to change the dependency, I uh, might want to make this a dependent on, uh, for instance, uh, number nine. It's just the number nine. So there's no way to add a start to start, start to finish, finish to finish kind of dependency ones that we're actually looking forward to using because they have been requested for so long. Luckily, I have another tenant at my disposal that does have the new functionality. And on my projectum environment, we do see the dependencies a little bit different where we now have the FS. And if I hover over it, it tells me that this is a finish to start dependency. This task can only start when the other task is finished. So task two needs to be finished before this task will start. That's how you should read this. Now there's a total of four types of dependencies that we have. So let me show you all of them. So the default is just adding a nine and if I click enter now it will change that to a nine FS just telling everyone okay this is a finish to start dependency Microsoft project doesn't show you that finish to start but it is the default so even Microsoft project uses finish to start dependencies as a default but if I click nine here now I know that task two will come after task one an easier way to represent that, of course, is the timeline view. So here we see that nice line going into task two, telling us that there is a dependency between these two tasks, and it is that this task needs to finish before this one starts. Good. But we've also seen something different. We've seen that if I now want to make task four dependent on task three, I now have more options available. If I type 11, I now have a extra menu that tells me that I have the option to set it as a start to start. So 11, start to start. And if we look at the timeline, we now see that the dependency line goes from the start of the first task to the start of the second task. Excellent. Now we can see where this is going, right? So the other one is going to be 13 and it's going to be a finish to finish. And then we have the final one and that's number 15 and that is a start to finish. Probably one of the more complex versions of a dependency where you can only start task seven once task eight is complete. All right, lovely. So now that we have the basics of advanced uh, dependencies set, let's have a look what happens if we import a project from Microsoft Project. Because it used to be that Microsoft Project files, that Microsoft Project files only could contain the default dependency. But now we have start to start, finish to finish, start to finish. Now let's see if this simple project, Dependency Test 2, can be imported as is. So I'll close this project. Yes, I do want to save it. And I want to go to the home page and create a new project based on the chosen MPP file. 
So here we have our dependencies test two. Click on OK. And seems like it did. There wasn't any warning message that we used to get when we had an import where some things didn't work, right? Do I sound surprised? Well, I am a little bit happily surprised, so to say. So it depends after. Yeah, it's in there. Woohoo! That's cool. And it works like it should. Lovely. All right. So even importing from a project, a uh, Microsoft project file works with the new dependencies. There is one thing that is missing and that is the option uh, to add lag. But with this, it is a much appreciated addition to Project for the Web. Advanced dependencies has been something we were looking forward to very much. And there were more updates because I haven't been around for quite a while. So let's have a look at the December update blog. Uh, here it only says that there's upcoming features, but we can look forward to a timeline zoom improvement. Um, I'm going to show you the grid conditional formatting because we now have that. And there is an increased task limit now for ta a thousand tasks, which is way better than the 500 that we had. And we have the advanced dependencies that we've just discussed. So that's December. We're going to take a look at the conditional coloring and the increased task limit just a bit. Uh, and uh, we have the January update as well. So grid color, grid coloring is now actually here. Uh, task limit is actually here, advanced dependencies. And there's two things that we can look forward to. That's the extended timeline zoom and the assign to me. Something for us to look forward to for sure. So let's have a look at that uh, conditional formatting. Here we are back at our schedule and let's create a new project field. And it's going to be a choice field, uh, green, amber, red. And just so you know, I'm not going to use the color picker here because I want to make sure that we have the conditional formatting availability here. So it's going to be a choice, um, field one, we're going to click create. And once we have that, we can start making things green and making things amber and so on. So conditional coloring, oh, let's make something red as well. So conditioning coloring is something that happens on a column wide level. So that means that if there is something in that col uh, column that triggers the coloring, that will happen. And we're going to see an example for field one, and I'm going to add one for duration as well. So here, conditional coloring, uh, field, field number one, where are you? Okay, so that's nice. It isn't an option for custom fields. Oh well. So let's have a look at duration. Maybe this is something that's coming up in a future update. So if the duration is more than 10 days, I want it colored greenish. I'll click on OK. And here you see that that summary is now gray, uh, greenish. And if I open up this one, or change that one and I can also change this one to be 20 and if I create another summary to top that summary the summary of the summaries and I promote that then you'll see that this one is also green 
I can also add an additional coloring. I can also say that if the duration is less than five days, I'll color it a little bit red, or a little bit. And here you see that it also colored the coding for, for closed summary tasks or subtasks. If this turns into six, it will not have any formatting. Can I add formulas? In the current scenario, you cannot create color formulas. So you can say that if duration plus assigned by plus quick look uh, equals uh, color green, that doesn't exist in this scenario. Um, currently, it's a color coding on a single column only with limited options uh, on the operators. Well, the operators are there, but limited values on, on output, so to say. Now, a question that I had is, does this also trickle down when I export it to Excel? So I'm preparing, creating an export. And once that loads, we'll see that the color coding does not trickle down to our Excel export. Something to be aware of when you are using that. An additional update, and let me find that project. Limit of tasks, uh, just to see how many tasks can I have in my schedule currently. And if I go way down, I have my task number of 1000. And if I wanted to add an additional task, I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, I could copy them and I could say, let's add those. And you'll be prompted by you exceeded the maximum number of tasks possible in a project. So we have a thousand tasks available to us now. And that's what was presented in the January update. And our last bonus update that we just received uh, the day before yesterday is custom working calendars in Project for the Web. So this is already a little bit presented during my last video, but now with an added using resource calendars option. That is very nice. And there is a description on what that means for us. If a resource has a local calendar which is different than the actual calendar that we have in the project schedule, we can now say that a project needs to adhere to that custom calendar from that resource. If you have that box unchecked, all tasks will be scheduled normally based on the project's calendar instead. So those were a couple of very nice additions that came to Project for the Web. I'm excited for this year. I'm looking forward to a lot of new updates to project for the web if you like this kind of video please consider subscribing hitting that like button and i will see you next time